Hi, my name is Blake Hillaby, and this is Daily Music Tips brought to you by Cape Town Music Academy. Today I'm going to talk to you about my concepts on music performance. One of the most important things I try and implement in my playing is to separate the practice room from the performance stage. When I practice, I try and do everything as slowly as I can. I try and think ahead, I try and break down each little detail of the chord progressions or the melody, I practice to a click, I, I'm very detail oriented when I practice. But there's nothing worse than bringing that to a gig. In my feeling, a gig needs to be a free-flowing experience. Music is an art form, music is a, a creative art, it's, it's poetry, it's it, it should evoke emotion, it should evoke feelings and moods and, you know, music can be thought-provoking, but it, it is not a description. Music is not a, it's not a fact. There's no hard rules, there's no, you know, there's nothing solid about it. You can't tell a, a story completely from start to finish and someone can walk away without hearing a single lyric and know exactly what he wanted to say. That is not, music is not capable of doing that. But music is capable of doing much more than that at the same time. But in order to do that, we need to be free from thought. So in the practice room, the better you practice, the more focused, the more you think, the more comfortable you feel doing each concept, the more comfortable you are at the gig, do not think about that. When when you have learned something to the point that you've forgotten it, and it comes out naturally in your playing, that's the only time it should ever come out in your playing. It's so often that youngsters, and myself sometimes, is practicing a new concept, an idea, and you force it in there, into your gig, into your solos. Because you either want to prove to yourself that you can do it, or you know, you want to, oh, I've been practicing, let me throw it in. But that is that is not music. The, the, the performance stage is never a place to throw in things that you're trying. You know, definitely when we're talking about something like jazz, that it's a place of creativity, it's a place of endless possibilities and no rules and the music in the right settings can go anywhere it, it, it wants to. It doesn't have to be preconceived or, you know, um, deter- predetermined, but it definitely shouldn't be trying to do something you can't do or you're not able to do yet. Because there's many times in gigs that I've done something that I've never done before, but as the idea came to me, I knew I'd be able to pull it off because it's not beyond my technical ability. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with doing throwing in things that you've never done before. But there is something wrong with throwing in something that you're not comfortable with and you're forcing it in there because you've been working on it or, you know, whatever it is. And I think that is the thing that that ruins gigs, that ruins the performances for yourself because now you... You're trying things, you, you, you're you going to end up disappointed because, I mean, no one ever plays a perfect gig. But when you're trying to throw in stuff you're not even comfortable with from the get-go, you will have even more disappointment. The the thing which, I, as I was learning to, to try and turn off my brain, and I'm still going through this process, um, is I found that I had to learn to be comfortable with playing much more simply there's that word, than what I'm practicing at home. And oftentimes my brain would be going like while I'm playing, oh, this is too simple, this is way too simple. But it, when I'm able to control myself in not falling for that trap and oh, this is too simple, I better um, make it more complicated, those are the best gigs I ever have. Those are the best gigs where I get the most response, uh, walk away feeling spiritually and in, uh, enriched you know as opposed to the gigs where I feel that and then I fall for it and I go into it okay, okay this is too simple I'm playing too too basic the people know what's going oh, I've done this before whatever that is 
what those are the gigs that I walk away more disappointed. You know, and and something we need to learn to to understand about ourselves is that it may be simple and boring to you because you've been practicing it or you learned that you've been playing the pentatonic scale for 40 years the way you're doing it in this moment with this rhythm section with whatever it may be in this moment is different to the audience and they've not heard that before um or they have and they will enjoy it hearing it because it's what came out of you it's the thing that will come out most naturally and therefore be the most honest and therefore be the most true to the moment and therefore be music that is my approach to performance that i try and be as honest to myself and to the audience by trying (laughs) i emphasize trying to play what comes and not what i force and like I emphasize, I want to say it again, that what comes naturally will feel simple to you. But I guarantee you, you record that gig, that those performances, and you listen back to it, all of a sudden, those notes don't seem as simple as they felt in that moment. Every single time when I've taken a simple solo, I thought, oh, this is boring. And I listen back to the recordings, I'm like, oh, that was actually nice, especially if I gave it a few days before I listened to it back again. I was actually doing a reco- um, uh, this pre-production for an album I'm working on with someone else and uh, the piano sort of was supposed to be in it and I tracked the piano, but just a scratch take, like not, not really concentrating. And the piano solo, I wasn't really paying attention. I was still like trying to check out the form and it was just so that we could get an idea of the song. And so I played really simply and, and kind of just had fun with it and we were kind of chuckling along while we were doing it. and. And the, the, the musician was like, wow, you have to keep that. So it was such a nice solo. You need to keep that. And I was like, what? That was terrible. I made mistakes. And, and then I didn't listen to it again. And then we came back to work at the stuff. And then we pressed play a couple of days later. And I listened to it. I was like, wow, that was actually a really nice take. And it was so simple. And yet I sat there going, oh, that was fresh. I, I don't recall trying to do that. And I don't recall trying to do that. And it's just testament to the, to the, to the mindset you can get into in a gig where You practice so much and you do so much and so many ideas come to you and you have these things that you're also trying to work on. And and so the things that come easily are the things that you know best. And so your brain will sometimes go, oh, that's boring. I've seen that before. I've played that before. I've heard it before. But that doesn't mean it's not the right thing for that moment. And learning to control that mind and control those thoughts and throw out those thoughts that are going to ruin the gig, those thoughts of, you need to play like this. You need to play like, oh, there's someone in the audience. You need to do that. You need to feel this. It needs to be better. It needs to be worse. <laughs> it needs to be hipper, whatever. Those thoughts are the gig ruining thoughts. And you know what? Oftentimes, it won't affect the gig for anyone else except yourself. But when you when you make that one mistake and then you disappoint yourself after four songs and five songs, you walk off not feeling feeling great. And the better you feel in the gig the better everyone else will feel. The audience will feel and resonate with you from that honesty and everyone will have a better experience of this art form because of your honesty and your ability to control yourself. And I love to say this, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, A drummer I used to work with, I still work with, but at the time we were working a lot together and he said, um, someone once said to him, before you do anything in, in, a, in a musical setting, ask yourself why. If you're going to play a full, why? Are you enhancing the music or are you trying to bring attention to yourself in anything? Because of course there needs to be fulls. Of course a pianist needs to tinkle away. A guitarist maybe needs to change up the rhythm of something and make it more exciting those need to happen in music definitely but the reason is why are you doing it selfishly egotistically because you want people to notice you because you want to show that you can um, or is it because the music is calling for that moment and if you can ask yourself why before everything you do you will you will transform yourself into a much greater musician <laughs>